Welcome to Brands Hatch for the second weekend of the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship. Last time out, the BTC racing team achieved podiums and points, and they'll be looking to do it all again this weekend. Track action is over this morning with free practice one. Tom Chilton topped the time sheets, so the team must be satisfied with that. Matt Campbell is the uh, data engineer. Um, a good start to the day with that free practice one. Yeah, very good start for uh, Tom especially. Uh, but all three cars have uh, learned a lot, trying different things in different corners. Uh, it's a really good uh, starting point for the weekend. What changes have you made sort of going into the next session? Mainly in the, uh, the driver inputs. You know, we've been going through lots of different corners and looking at what worked and what didn't work. Important data collected and obviously everyone's feeling quite comfortable at the moment. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely good to be at the, the near the top of the times. Tom, a good session in free practice one. Uh, you feeling confident going into free practice two? Absolutely, yeah. I love Brands Hatch GP. It's a great circuit. It's my local circuit and we did a good job. Uh, we went out there and we're P1 for the majority of the session. And we got picked right at the end by Jake Hill, who had fresher tyres on uh, because he had a problem with the, the Swindon engine at Donington Park. So he, he, he actually DNF, so he actually had fresher tyres. So that explains why he, he picked me. But I think we've, we've made some solid changes on the car. We fixed a lot of the problems we had at Donington Park. And it shows I'm back where I should be at the, at the top of the time. So it is a great way to start the weekend. And I'm very much looking forward to going out in FP2 now. But what's your thoughts after those two free practice sessions? It's very difficult because we don't know about the tyres. We're obviously trying to conserve as many tyres as we can. But uh, looking at FP1 and looking where we are now, and we've got plenty of tyres to chuck out for qualifying, hopefully we're in a bit better place than we was last week. And if we can get both of them in that top 10 and in the top 5, we're in a good shape. And that's what I'm aiming for. I mean, with the tyres, obviously there's, there's one issue about how many sets of tyres you've got, but also the heat here is quite intense again, isn't it? it so is. temperature management's crucial. It is. It's, it's, um, it's difficult because you can't use the tyres because you need them, and then when you use the tyre, you only get two or three laps, and then you're back to where you was. So we just need to be mindful of that, and, and this time we haven't got to lose our way. We need to come back now to qualifying with four sets of fresh tyres, and let's have a see where we are. That, that's all we can hope for now. Chrissy, how are you feeling about qualifying today? Um, yeah, a little bit 50-50 um, in a minute because car was not fantastic um, for FP1 and FP2 and it's the uh, same for all three of us. Uh, we really don't know what we've got going into qualifying. Um, so we're just uh, fingers crossed and we, we put the new tyres on and see what happens. How hot does it get in the car? We know it's hot outside of the car, but clearly it's hot in the car. And does that affect your sort of your concentration levels at all? Are you well hydrated? Yeah, I'm all good. Uh, I, the the temperature in the car is 20 degrees ambient, uh, hot, hotter than the ambient temperature. So um, you know, if it's 35 out here now, we're talking another 20 degrees hotter in the car. So we've got to keep hydrated, keep drinking all of our isotonic drinks, and make sure that we're going in. And and uh, then we cool down after is, is is just important as keeping it hydrated. The feelings I've got with my car at the moment, I am putting down to old tyres rather than changing the car setup too much. So, fingers crossed. <laughs> Hopefully it's the tyres and we can go back to the, the front row where we belong. Are you looking forward to it, I'm guessing, from a racing perspective? You know, you expect these challenges, nothing simple. Nothing simple, no. I mean, there's so many variables out there. And, uh, you know, between FP1 and FP2, the track changed sort of 8 to 10 degrees. That's huge. Uh, but on this car, it's such a great chassis. I do small changes, and it's actually a very big change uh, to drive. You know, if I explain some of the changes to people, they're like, does that do anything? And I'm like, yeah, it really does. This car's so good. Uh, and it's very important to make sure you don't go too far and go outside the window of the, the performance of the tyre. So uh, I'm hoping we've adjusted correctly for this hot weather and looking forward to running four brand new tyres. Josh, first of all, can I just ask you about the Grand Prix circuit here and how you would describe it from a driver's perspective? 
it's fairly unique. Uh, you've got obviously the two different sections, obviously the, the indie circuit, which we drive, we'll be driving towards the end of the years, got its own kind of tight, twisty, uh, really precise kind of section. Uh, and then as soon as you head at the back, it is, you know, it's really similar in Thruxton in terms of it requires massive commitment, really high speed corners. Um, so it does add a nice mix uh, from a driving perspective, but it brings in a unique challenge that you're trying to set a car up for somewhere that is nice and nimble in the Indy section, but also really stable at high speed out the back. Have you managed to achieve that after the practice sessions? We're getting there. Um, as always, it's going to be about putting a lap in when it counts. Uh, and yeah we just need to try and dial the car in as best as possible obviously the the lack of tires that we have hurts us so the first time we're going to run on any decent rubber is going to be in qualifying so we just have to take an educated guess and, and pray that we've got the uh the, the right balance and nothing gets too unstable there's just no room for error is there no nope. no it's uh as we know it's a close championship and uh every tenth counts yeah. how would you like to see qualifying go of course we need to claw a few uh points back this weekend uh, we didn't have the, the best of starts at Donington um, so yeah it's, it's just going to be a case of seeing what we can do in qualifying but um, obviously all the all the points really come tomorrow so we just want to be in the best position for then. Well, there is Josh Cook fifth fastest 1 minute 31.661 is the time that he has done and now you see precious few greens and purples you know they've already had their best out of their first set so we're sort of on a reset unless they're out of sync or just going for two front tyres across the front of the front speaking most people will be going for uh, for tyres and just looking at the BTC cars they they are struggling slightly in these hot uh, conditions they discovered um, around Donington when it was obviously equally hot yeah so most cars on their out lap at the moment building up for this final flurry of, uh, of lap times right Chilton is now doing personal bests in sectors so his pace is upping but still Rory Butcher is the man who tops the times by nearly half a second. Five minutes to go, more and more cars going for the pit lane as Josh Cook comes over the timing line, but not improving in sector stays ninth, but ahead of his teammate Tom Chilton. There is Michael Priest, Jack Sears Trophy winner of Donington, the Jack Sears Trophy for those that haven't had an overall podium before this season. And Michael Priest into the top ten, good effort that, isn't it? He splits his teammates, he's between Cook and Chilton, how about that? That's a good effort, but this could be a better lap from Ingram, he's a bit of a bit tired, yeah, he was quickest of his, his personal best in the first session. So that's the end of qualifying and Steve there was a little bit of um, excitement here at that last moment because Creasy put in a pretty much stunning lap time there which unfortunately we has um, not gone through because the final times are just coming up now. So yeah, uh, Michael had done a uh, fantastic time, split both Josh and uh, Tom and uh, I would imagine it's been deducted for track limits. We don't know that yet. Zoe will just go and have a word and try and get to the bottom of it, see whether it can be appealed or not, and see whether or not it can, um, it, it can change where we've ended up. I mean, going into qualifying, it was always going to be the unknown here, wasn't it? A bit of a lottery, really, and the temperatures were something like 46 degrees, so yeah. it was always going to be tough. The temperature has been a uh, extraordinary today. Um, I think that, um, I think, some people have fared better. Uh, we're certainly very happy with the race car, but we've just got to see what happens on the day now. Well, you've got um, a ninth and a tenth. Ninth for Josh, uh, tenth for Tom. So you've got to be relatively happy with that. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's fifth row. We've closed out the fifth row, so uh, the boys will do very well, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, and Michael, I'm really disappointed for him because he really put a stunning lap in. So we'll have to wait and see the outcome of the uh, appeal. So at the end of that qualifying session, there was a debate as to where Creasy would end up. And um, I know you went to find out what happened on that. Can you update us? Uh, yeah, so we've just got back from seeing the, um, the uh, Topa officials. Basically, he'd managed to split Josh and uh, Tom in the qualifying in his, one of his final laps. Um, unfortunately, just before the chequered flag, we had that lap removed because it was deemed that he'd gone outside of track limits. And so they removed the time from us. Um, we've just been and spoken to them and unfortunately we've seen footage and we've seen the um, photographs and he was outside of track limits so he will start tomorrow P18 unfortunately in comparison to 
where we were hoping you would start um, between Josh and Tom. So, um, yeah, a bit disappointing, but it is what it is. But it's race day, just about to get underway. How are you feeling? Excited, can't wait to get going. And I think we've got a chance. I think we could get ourselves in it. Just need to get over the first corner and I think once we get from there we'll play our strategy and see where we get to. Enjoying this hot weather? Yeah, I love it. Just hope that it stays at this sort of temperature because I think it makes it easier for all of us, not just us, but all everybody in the pit lane. If it changes, it changes for everybody, so we've just got to be patient now. Underway, good start is made by Turkington who gets ahead of Hill. Jackson gets squeezed by Cambridge. They run. Turkington has to jig round the outside, so Jackson losing places straight away. Corolla passes the three series and also look on the attack. There is Josh Cook, number 66, and Oliver's off the road. There was contact. Can he get it back on? He can. Can they all miss him? Yes, thankfully. Oh, that could have sparked disaster, but they've all just about got through it. And if anything, it looks like Josh Cook is closing up. Yes, he is. Josh Cook has just done the fastest lap of the race. Yeah, he's coming, hasn't he? He's in seventh place and he's uh, he's got that uh, gap to close on England. Look at Josh Cook, he's right with them. Yeah, that little bit of side-to-side -side action has allowed Cook to close very quickly. So Cook closes on Ingram and he's taking with him Chilton and Proctor and Sutton in tenth place in the background. And Cook, and here comes Cook to the inside, gets a face full of the Toyota, goes to the outside. His teammate Tom Chilton is next in the queue in eighth place as they go through Druids. And Ingram slow out of Graham Hill Bend, and that means that Cook comes up alongside him. Ingram breaks late. Now, what caused that little hesitation? Either it was way, very strange. It was almost like he was in the wrong gear yeah. coming out of the corner, wasn't it? Either way, he's dropped back from Hill and he's been reeled in by Cook, and you can see now that Tom has got to go defensive. Josh Cook has got a lighter car, he's got the outside line, gets his nose in front, can Ingram swoop back through on the inside, they're absolutely side by side, leading on one another as Hill goes off the road and back on again. Tom Chilton's trying to buy into this, as are Proctor and Sutton next in the queue. Ingram back on the inside of Cook, who gets run out wide, who has a massive, massive slide. He's back onto the circuit, but he's behind Sutton, so that puts him into 10th place. Hill's not moving over, he may lose two places here, because Chilton will try and go through up the inside as well, as Hill gets left outside. No, nope, Hill's able to slot back in, but a uh, little mistake at Graham Hill there. Ingram has the inside as Chilton tries to turn in and get a cut back, but a bit early and they rub. That gives a little bit of breathing space to Jackson for third place. <laughs> Tom, P5 in race one. That's a great start to the day. It's a great start. I'm um, really happy. Uh, it's a bit like Donington Park. I was moving forwards in race one. Uh, Donington, we went from 16th to 10th. Here, we've gone from 10th to 5th. I love moving forwards in the race. It's really exciting. Um, I, I'm a racing driver because I love the racing part. Not the testing, not the qualifying, it's the racing part. I really, really enjoy it. Chris, a, a really solid run in race one. You must be happy with that. Yeah, it was, uh, it was quite tough coming through the pack. I mean, I knew we had the pace from yesterday, uh, but it was quite difficult uh, getting your way through, but I just had to, I had to go for it to start. And then uh, I think we finished 13th in the end, I'm not sure, but, um, but yeah, it was uh, solid. That's what I needed this morning. and. Uh, gives me great um, uh, stead for, to, for the next race to try and get inside that top 12 and uh, get a reverse grid pole and, um, and, and you never know what might happen. We're all set for the next round. The cars are about to make their way out to the grid. It is round five of the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship and it is go and it is Colin Turkington who makes an absolutely stormy start and Camish bogs down. He's on the outside of Chilton as they dive down towards Hawthorns. The Honda stands its ground on the inside, Sutton on the outside line. Up the kerb still stands his ground on the outside but eventually the road comes to Chilton and he secures the place. Tom Chilton for the moment at least is keeping Ash Sutton at bay. Then it is Oliver, then it is Hill and then you've got Senna Proctor running ninth as the cars turn through Westfield. Now this lap two of 15. Josh Crook's a man on a mission as well. Look there, number 66 in the second of the BTC Racing Hondas. He comes up now towards the timing line but Josh trying to work his way forward. Remember he was delayed in the first race. He started 21st on the grid and he is flying. Oh, Jackson goes wide, Crease goes into the gravel. He's there, makes contact with him and more contact and 
off the both gate. And Morgan has now joined in in 10th place, and there Chilton finally makes the dive up the inside, through he goes. Ash Sutton's going to be the next one to challenge on the run up the hill. Chilton goes out a little bit wide. Jackson looks back at the inside, can't do it, but he does cover off Sutton. Very wide there. Is there going to be a dive? Yes. Or is there a puncture? I think Chilton's got a puncture. He's certainly got a problem because he's slowed right down. Mick, it's obviously been quite a day so far in this race too. Uh, Tom has had to retire from the race. We weren't sure if he'd had something had happened on track or was it purely mechanical? Uh, well, he just moved into P4, uh, looking pretty good in the race, and then all of a sudden uh, he's had a pass here in issue. So we don't know what it is yet. We need to investigate it, look at the data, and try and uh, look at what it is. But this is not the position he wanted to be at at this point in this second race today. Um, such a lot has happened, but tell us from your perspective what's gone on. Um, well, Tom's we're not quite sure. We've had a problem, uh, a technical issue, and it, uh, it would appear that we've lost the power steering, but we're not sure yet because he just got himself into a position looking like a podium, and for whatever reason, it's lost. A technical issue has come up on a dash and we've lost power steering so that that gets rid of that one and josh there's a, a problem in the front from um again we're not quite sure because we're stripping it now uh technical issue uh something under the bonnet has put the heat temperature up so we're just looking for that as well so just unfortunate it is unfortunate there's a bit of time before the final race are you confident we'll yes. be on the grid for sure for sure yeah we'll Tom's is the bigger issue because we're not sure what's done it. Josh's is uh, quite an easy fix. But again, we've just got to be patient, get them back together and let's see what we can go and do again in the next one. Tom, you had a great start and we really had pace in that race at the beginning, fighting your way through. Absolutely, you must be devastated to have had to come into that into the pits. Absolutely gutted. Uh, I did everything right, got a good start. Fought off Sutton very, very hard that I lost the the field in front of me but I wasn't gonna let them through um, and then uh, safety car put us all back together I was monitoring my temperatures my pressures I got everything perfect um, and then did a really nice uh, if I can say it myself uh, <laughs> uh, outbreaking maneuver on Ollie at, at paddock and um, quick, as soon as I got past Ollie I was pulling away and I was catching up to the three in front I think quite quickly it's very noticeable um, and with the less weight on I'm confident I would have easily caught up and overtaken Dan. Not that it mattered because he had the same problem I did I think with the pad steering but I I'm gutted because I'm pretty sure, 100% sure I was just about to get third at least with some trophies and uh, there's nothing I can do about it. A pad steering failure is just one of those things you know. Um, we are obviously pushing the car to its maximum. Um, that we're getting failures like pad steering because we've got so much load going through the front end. Um, we can't drive it any faster, all we need is a, is a bit of luck. Creasy, that was uh, not a good race for you. How did you see it from your seat? Oh, just uh, he blatantly just smashed into the side of me. I mean, uh, I don't know why, me and Bob, good mates, um, teammates last year, race fairly, we come through Hawthorne side by side. I gave him, I could have pushed him off then if I really wanted to, but I kept a, a bit of a tight line. We actually touched on the exit and then he just thought I was being uh, naughty to him. So he just literally right hand down me and uh, snapped my wheel. And then obviously we both end up in the gravel. We both end up with no Jack's ears. We both end up with no points. And we start from the back of the grid when he already had a 10 second penalty. So one of them, one of them things. Frustrating though, isn't it? Very, 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 especially, uh, I was looking good for the Jack Sears today, but uh, I think that's just going to be out of reach today. After the disappointment of a non-finish for all three cars earlier, the team have really been hard at work repairing all of them to get them ready for the final race of the day. We're only a few minutes away from that, and I have to say, this is teamwork. Who is going to make the best start out of the rear wheel drive brigade? Bad start, relatively speaking, by Jack Goff compared to the rear wheel drive brigade. But now life becomes really tough as he tries to 
find a way past that Tom Chilton up alongside Senna Prox and number three Honda is Chilton the blue goes Hyundai is about to lose his spot as Prox has slots in behind him Matt Neal is alongside Sam Osborne who gets run out wide at Westfield it's Tom Chilton running in 12th spot as Matt Neal's now on the attack yeah these guys all started at the back didn't they and uh, they're coming through gradually but and you've got Tom Chilton trying to find a way past them as well as they turn into 30s Jake Hill goes wide leaves the door wide open Tom Chilton goes through Tom won't have many passes as easy as that one, but he capitalises upon it and he gains 11th place as a result. A first British Touring Car Championship win for Tom Oliver to Brands Hatch. Chrissy, it's been a very challenging weekend. How would you summarise it? Uh, probably one of the hardest weekends of my life um, with my personal uh, issues going on. Um, uh, the team's been great with that side of things and uh, I just can't wait to get home and see my family now. And, um, yeah, that last race, great, P11, fantastic. I'm sorry that I'm not over the moon with it, but we, we had 100 degrees on the engine temp straight away and we we had to manage the whole race. I was short shifting the whole time. Uh, I was lifting off everywhere and I think we had actual pace in the car for top five, easy. And we would have won the Jack Sears easy. So disappointing, I don't know how I can say that with 11th, but I, I really am disappointed, yeah. You know, when you put your heart and your soul into it and you, you can see an opportunity potentially, and but you've got so many challenges and things to deal with, but then you learn and you'll take that into the next race? Yeah, I just hope the boys can to, can work over the next two weeks and try and find the problem and, uh, you know, and uh, we'll come back stronger, I'm sure. The, the boys done an amazing job. Paul Hartley's kept his 100% record of keeping the cars out on track and... Uh, They've done a great job and they've all three of them have had to work hard and get the cars out for race three and uh, we succeeded and we got some points so that's good. Starting 23rd near the back of the grid, you can't see the five second board, you're that far away from the lights, you're getting your engineer to tell you five seconds to go so you're preparing a start um, and we, we climbed through the field um, all the way up to P8 which is great. I've had two top tens today but um, I'm gutted I missed out on the podium in race two but uh, a pad steering failure is... Uh, is nobody's fault, it's not mine, it's not the team's, it's one of those things. Um, it was within its lifing, because as a team you make sure everything has its life um, on every part and it was within its lifing, so like I said, no one did anything wrong, but it doesn't take away the fact that I wasn't holding the trophy in, uh, in, in, in the second race. But at the end of the day, we've got a fifth and we've got a ninth and it's some solid points and we can move on forwards at Alton Park. Steve, it would be fair to say it's been a, a challenging day at the office. Yeah, it's been a very difficult day for the drivers and the teams. I have to commend them all, uh, both, the, uh, both the lads that are running the cars and the drivers themselves. They put in a fantastic day's results. We didn't have things go the way we wanted to and uh, obviously some of the damage has been pretty extreme. But overall, we've been really pleased with the outcome for the day. I mean, the team have worked incredibly hard, haven't they? When the cars came back after that second race with that damage, they just did not stop. Testament to the team here. Yeah, it was brutal for them, and they are just truly terrific. You know, all, all my best to all of the boys that did the work on the, t on the team cars and the drivers as well. Um, an engine change of John Cook, uh, Chilton's steering pump, and uh, of course, Creasy's off. That was not his, his fault. So, um, no, a good overall day. I was going to ask you if you enjoyed it, but I guess I know what the answer might be. <laughs> uh, enjoyable, yes. Um, uh, financially, no. But it's the way touring cars are. And uh, Josh has got a uh, fastest lap in the second race and in the third race. So we're, we're, we're finding the answers to some of our sluggish start at Donington. So we're ready to go and bring on Alton Park.